In this video, I will give 5 hot takes in HTML and CSS that I stand by. I will be ranking these in order of minty to spicy, so least to most controversial. <laughs> At number 5, we have a minty take. Use semantic HTML elements. Here's a quick HTML document that's pretty simple, but it's unnecessarily complicated. There's a lot of divs that we as a programmer have given meaning through IDs and classes, but there's a much better way to do this. This div could just be a header tag. This div, which represents the main content, could just be a main tag. And these two divs that have the class section could just be section. And finally, of course, there is a footer. So I would say this is a no-brainer. I think a lot of you already do this. At number 4, I'm telling you to keep the DOM as flat as possible. In HTML, nesting your elements very deep is just as bad as nesting your code blocks in any other language. If you're solving things with a very nested DOM, it could indicate you're not really using the display properties. I especially recommend to check out the display grid, as it really can solve complex layout problems for you. Now, number 3 might be spicy for soy devs. Because now, I'm saying that non-interactive content should never have JavaScript. Now don't get me wrong, JavaScript is the right tool for the job if you are making a website which has dynamic content and you have interactivity. But for a lot of simple like blog websites, personal websites, you should just avoid JavaScript altogether. Think of it like this, if your web page could have been printed on paper, why are you using a JavaScript framework with a virtual DOM and all that overhead when you can just rely on basic HTML and CSS? My hot take number two is that you should really start using all the features of CSS selectors. Beginners in CSS might rely very heavily on classes to be able to target elements, but what I'm proposing is that if you get good at CSS selectors, then you get rid of a lot of classes and IDs. So let's look at the style sheet for this website. And you can see there's a lot of CSS selectors just targeting a class. But if you have a very simple website like this, you really don't need all these classes, you can just hard code it. So for example, this top level dim, what's so special about it? Well, it has a class, but can't we just describe this as being the top level div in the body? Yes, it has the same effect. And there's only one image in this entire document, so why do we give it a class? And here's another div, but why do we even need this div? Just get rid of it. But that actually changes some things. So the question is, how do we add this spacing back? We could do a bottom padding on the div. Moving on, we can just get rid of all the classes. Here we're using CSS nesting to make it a bit more concise. For my final spiciest take at number one. Don't use classes, period. I'm gonna prove to you that it's possible. This website confirms all of the previous hot takes, including this one. So you cannot find any classes on the website, there's no JavaScript, the hamburger menu is fully CSS, the language selector is fully CSS, and of course, different localizations are just different HTML websites. And I think the CSS is very readable. The website is created using Zolla, a very fast static site generator. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a video about it. These were my 5 hot takes. Tell me, how many of these do you agree with? <laughs>